A week or so ago, I noticed an interesting game on the eShop called Clan N, a beat em up, one of my favourite genres, with a quite unique zoomed out perspective. It was enough to make me want to have a closer look. Unfortunately, I was knee deep in making about three other videos at the time, but having now had a chance to put some time into it, I can now give it the review treatment. Is it Clan N or is it Clan N? No. Bloody hell. I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the developers for the review code, and now let's find out. Story-wise, things are kept to a very brief cutscene. A seemingly peaceful village is shown until suddenly an evil figurehead appears casting a shadow over that village, signifying his sinister intentions and soon four heroes step forward to fight against their would-be oppressor. It's very brief and is all done via images with no text at all, but it gets the message across and reminded me of the flashy intros you would get on the arcade beat-em-ups back in the day, such as the Turtles arcade game. Gameplay wise then, as mentioned, Clan N is a beat em up, although it takes place from a zoomed out perspective, far removed from the usual big chunky character sprites and locations found in other beat em ups. You have four characters to choose from, each of which has a light attack performed by pressing Y and a heavy attack which is used by pressing X. Stringing attacks together with these two buttons will allow you to pull off a few combo moves, complete with their own attack animation. You move with either the D-pad or the left stick and jump with the B button and I liked the inclusion of both a dodge move performed by moving the right stick and a block move when you hold down the R button. You also have a projectile attack specific to each character, an example of this being the shuriken that one of the characters throws and whilst you do have a finite number of these, you will find additional stock generally left behind by defeated enemies and enemies will also drop loot which increases your score or health top ups using the classic beat em up staple of roasted meat. Finally, you also have a special attack which can only be performed when your special meter, shown via this quartered circle, has energy in it. It plays out in a standard beat em up fashion, with you needing to clear the section of all enemies before being urged to proceed, at which point the screen will lock and the next batch of enemies will appear. Each level also contains a number of shops and you will be awarded skill points as you play. You can then spend these in the shop to either improve your character's attributes, increasing their proficiency in a number of areas, but you can also use these points to increase the number of lives or projectiles you have as well as adding to your special meter. What is quite different from most beat-em-ups though is just how long each level is. Generally, levels in beat-em-ups are fairly short, but here they take around half an hour each to complete. There are auto-save points fairly often in levels, so you don't have to finish a level in one sitting, but even with this feature, shorter levels and then a change of scenery is what stops beat-em-ups, a genre that is quite repetitive by its very nature, from becoming stale. And by having longer levels, Clan N does fall prey to this to some extent at times. To the game's credit, it does try to keep things fresh by having the occasional sub-boss and also includes mini-games at some point within each level. A few of them are duds, which themselves go on a little too long, but there were a couple that I quite enjoyed, such as this endless running segment where you must escape a boulder and this ride on a dragon's back. Once completed in a level, these can be chosen from the game's main menu and played separately from the game itself. Each level ends with a main boss battle and the bosses all have their own attack patterns to work out in order to defeat them. You have a set number of lives and continues, although a game over doesn't mean having to start again. You will instead go back to the last save point and must attempt that section again with the amount of health and lives that you had at that moment. Gradually through this method you will improve enough to pass any difficult sections or you could call in reinforcements as the game supports up to 4 players locally or online. Starting with the local multiplayer, the first thing I noticed is that it doesn't include drop-in play. This is a very odd exclusion as it's what beat-em-up should be all about. However, due to the frequency of the save points you can quit out to the main menu and add any additional players from here, then pick up where you left off. Workable, but not an ideal solution. Online also has a strange setup as choosing to play an online match will delete your single play data. Again, such a strange choice. Surely a mode where you can search for players playing a particular level would have made more sense. So with this in mind, I went and fully completed the story mode first before attempting online again, and there was absolutely nobody online at all. There is an option to play with friends if you know others that own the game, but I cannot attest to how the online performs I'm afraid, because I just didn't get to try it. Having played a fair amount in both single and multiplayer locally, Clan N definitely strikes me as a beat-em-up that was designed with multiplayer at the forefront of the developer's mind. 
The zoomed out perspective is ideal for four players, and even the minigames have clearly been designed to evoke both a cooperative and competitive spirit from a room full of friends. I played with three players and it's a great deal of fun with more people, it really does elevate the experience. Whilst I applaud the intention of multiplayer oriented gameplay wholeheartedly, I do feel that it perhaps comes at the expense of making the game more tedious than it would have been otherwise in single player. Finally for gameplay I'm going to look at how the zoomed out perspective affects things. Starting with the positives, it creates quite a unique style to a genre that has been around for a long time. It also makes the small number of platforming sections present, something I usually detest in beat em ups, much easier and enjoyable. And finally it means that the screen doesn't become too cluttered when faced with a number of enemies or when playing with a number of people. From a negative standpoint, because the whole screen serves as a walk-in area, it does mean that the user interface will be in your way when you are fighting towards the top of the screen. You also lose a lot of the brutality which makes beat-em-ups feel so satisfying as you cannot see the attacks as well, they don't have that bone crunching element to them. Gameplay is fun, it's classic beat-em-up fair, but the changes made to a classic formula do miss as often as they hit and it scores 13 out of 20. Controls work well, the occasional platforming was sound and the dodge and block moves led to some strategic battles and they score 15 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, the zoomed out pixel art aesthetic is most certainly what initially alerted me to the game and I really do think it looks great. The levels are colourful and varied and there is a good amount of variety in terms of enemies with around 4 or 5 general enemies that appear in every level and then 1 or 2 that are specific to particular levels as well. What's lost in detail is made up for in charm and in some ways although the perspective to this series was different it reminded me of the classic Commodore series The Last Ninja in terms of the overall feel and that's most certainly not a bad thing. Performance wise this is where things go downhill unfortunately as I had the game crash on me 4 times while playing and one of those times was just after beating a boss. Now due to the frequent save points I only lost a screen or two of progress you're talking a couple of minutes worth so it's most certainly not game breaking but whilst this alleviated the problem a little it most certainly doesn't excuse it. I have heard that a patch has been submitted to eradicate this but at the time of this review it is definitely an issue. For the record, three of the crashes were whilst playing in docked and one was whilst playing in handheld mode, although to be fair, the majority of my time with the game was in docked mode so this is no surprise. The audio is appropriate for the feudal Japan setting and whilst it never excelled, it served its purpose well. The sound effects such as the blades clashing or the grunts and cries of your protagonist were as you would expect and again did their job adequately. The score that I'm about to give visuals pains me as I loved the unique and interesting look that the zoomed out perspective created, plus the variety in locations was great to see, but 4 crashes in 7 levels means performance is going to knock it down a fair bit and they scored 10 out of 20. Audio is serviceable if not spectacular and it scores 13 out of 20. Clan N costs £13.49, $14 or €14.99 or $22 Australian dollars 50 and will take up just 152 megabytes of your Switch's memory. It contains 7 levels and took me around 3-4 to four hours to complete plus there are those mini games available to you as well. Now for me beat em ups fall into two categories, short 45 minutes to 1 hour games that you'll blitz through every so often, the arcade archives offerings on the Switch such as Sengoku or Double Dragon being good examples of these, or you have longer games but with short levels which you can play a couple of levels every so often to chase high scores, Streets of Rage 4 being a good example of this. Clan N doesn't really fit into either camp and therefore I couldn't see myself playing it again on completion even though it is a decent game. I will be fair and say that it does have 4 player local plus online but the online appears to have no one playing it already. Plus of course those crashes need to be factored into the price as well and with all of this factored in value scores are disappointing 8 out of 20. To conclude Clan N is a decent beat em up that has the potential to be even better than the score it's about to receive. It includes most of what you would expect to find, plus its change to the usual perspective allows it to add certain things such as easier platforming and a useful dodge move. Its issue is that the change of perspective does also have the adverse effect at times plus the length of the levels causes some tedium, albeit you can stop and come back to them should you wish. But above all of this you have the fact that 4 crashes in 4 hours of gameplay is just not good enough. It's not a bad game and the enjoyment increases tenfold with friends. If they patch it to stop the crashes and add a few quality of life features and if you find it on sale you could have some fun 
but I'm sorry to say that in its current state, it's hard to recommend it at this moment in time. Plan N gets a switch up score of 59%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did, hopefully the developers will take note and patch this one up because it does definitely have some potential. Anyway, a quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.